I'm the founder of Tensegra Teach, a dynamic educational teaching tool. Uh, you may be watching this video because you have just purchased a 12 Dow icosahedron model and we'll be going through how to assemble this model uh, later on. It might look a little daunting. The more dowels and the more bands in a model, the more daunting it looks. Uh, but it's really quite simple. And so follow each step carefully, pause the video when you need to, and replay as often as you need to. I look forward to it. So you should have received in your kit 12 dowels, 12 rubber bands, and 24 black caps. So the first step is to take the rubber band and place it onto each of the dowels, placing it flat into the slot, making sure there are no twists in the band. And we want the band even on both sides of the dowel. So if I was to create an imbalance here, you will see that by pulling the center of the bands out on both sides, the imbalance becomes easily apparent. And I will have to pull this side further. And pull it out again to see, is that balanced? Pretty good. Okay. So I just happen to have 12 of these already assembled and ready. And um, I suggest that you pause the video and place the, dow the bands on each of the dowels, test for the balance, make sure that they're ready. And when you're ready, um, turn the video back on and I'll see you in a little bit. Okay, so here we are, we've got our 12 dowels, each with a band placed on it, ensuring that it is even. Okay, the next step is we take four dowels and we organize them into this shape. We're going to be taking the band of one dowel and placing it into the slot of the first. Okay. So, and then we'll be placing a cap on top to hold it in place. The way to place caps on is take the cap, put it diagonally on the slot, and then push it on, okay? Starting diagonally to the slot at the one end, pushing it on until it's on both, and then twisting it down into place. If we don't twist it into place, it's not necessarily secure, okay? So, we'll be taking the band of one dowel, putting it into the slot of another, twisting that cap into place. As we progress around, we're going to want to make sure that the dowel twists away, and so this band moves away from this other dowel, as opposed to tucking under. Okay, so we want the dowel going in this way, twisting the dowel away, as opposed to twisting the dowel under. Okay, so we twist the dowel away, put the slot in, the band in the slot, and place the cap. Same thing here. We're going to twist the dowel away from its previous dowel and then place the band in and the cap on top. Okay. One last one. We'll twist that dowel away, not under, but away. Place the band in place, making sure that this final dowel is twisted away and then the cap on top. Okay, so um, we would like this resulting square to be relatively even. The more even it is at each step, the more likely it is to be even as a final result. So I see that this distance is smaller than all the others. So I will undo this a bit, slide it down, 
twist it back on. There, it looks more even. Okay, so you can pause the video and complete that process. And I'll see you when you're done. Okay, welcome back. Next step, take an additional four dowels and we're going to be attaching them like so. We'll see if they stay without being attached. Okay, creating this pattern. So we're going to be attaching them to the opposite band from these attachments. We have a free band with no dowels attached to it. And so, place the dowel and the cap in place. And uh, this is why we twisted the dowels outward so this band would become available. And so we'll go around the model, inserting bands in place all the way around keeping the distance at the tips about the same as these that consistency okay so and then one last one So, okay, so why don't you pause and complete that process and I'll see you when you're done. Okay, so once you have this shape organized, the next step in the process is we're going to connect these free dowels to the tips of the others, forming triangle-like patterns. Okay. They're going to be attaching about the same distance as all the others, keeping this consistent throughout. And we're attaching it to the band that ends up being on top. It is pretty clear as you do it. Don't worry about the shape distorting as you go through. Once we complete it, you'll see that it evens out again. Great. You'll also notice that as we complete this third step, the model rises. It becomes much more three-dimensional. Okay. And there's a sense of kind of this dynamic, elastic stability to it. So, why don't you complete that process, and I'll see you when you're done. Okay, welcome back. Now that you've completed this shape, um, in a sense, half the model, we have only the other half to complete, we'll need the last four dowels. They're going to organize like so. You'll see that there's a pattern forming in this assembly. You know, the four interlocking, another four combining those, and then the last four which will mirror these. And so, we take the free tip of this dowel and attach it in, placing a cap on it. 
so. It has started to rain in Costa Rica. Um, you can probably hear that over the video. You see how loud it gets. Okay, so again, keeping these distances always about the same. So I'll uh, let you pause the video and complete that process and I'll see you when you're done. Okay, so you may notice that we are on the verge of forming another set of squares here, of these interconnecting squares. And so we need to complete that process. We're going to take the free end of the outermost dowels and connect it to the free band of the dowel next to it. Like so, creating another square. So we'll work around the model doing this. And again, you will see that the model distorts as you go through this process, but when you complete it, it balances out again. Trying to keep the distances all the same. Okay. Okay. So, the last step, as you might guess, would be to complete the bottom of the model. To close the bottom and create a mirror image of the top. Um, so, the easiest way to do that would be to flip the model and work on it this way. So, you can also notice that there is a spiraling pattern around with the dowels. And if we were to bring them closer together, they will tend to come spiraling in this way, clockwise, together this way. And so that's what we'll do, as opposed to reversing the spiral. So, bring them together and attach them at about the same distance as usual. But, one exception is if we were to keep on spiraling, we could, but it's going to create quite a bit of tension on this side, and it might pull the caps off. It might not, but let's instead balance the model out by pulling these two together, put the cap on, and we have a more stable model now. It's kind of like a boat. You know? And so the last step would be to bring these two together. And so we shall. And here we are. Okay, so now that we have our completed model, there's many things that one could do to experiment. There are no rules. There are no wrong things to do. So feel free to explore how you can modify and change the model and how that impacts its behavior. Uh, one direction to explore would be 
if we look at these squares that are formed, all the tips of the dowels coming together in this spiraling fashion to create the squares, we could make the squares smaller by bringing all the tips closer together, pulling the bands through the slots. Yeah? Something like so. We could go all the way until they touch, but then it's no longer really a tensegrity. The closer they are, the more stable it becomes. There's less wiggle room between them. Yes. If we look at one of the bigger squares, there's a lot of wiggle room. And so if we bring all of these squares closer together and make them small, it will form a diamond-like shape and it will become more stable. Conversely, we could undo that. We could go the other way. We could enlarge all these squares. We could place all the dowel tips at the center of the bands. You have to go around it over and over to, to accomplish that. We could do that where all the dowel tips are in the center of the bands and if we do it all the way around the model we'll find the whole model expands and becomes more spherical. That's often what we'll find in nature. And it's very adaptive, very dynamic. We could go even further in that we expand the squares all the way until we end up with triangles. We'll have to keep going. So here's the triangle. You can look and search. Here's the triangles. The triangles right now are big. We could instead shrink all the triangles. Make the triangles smaller. And what we'll find is that will create more of a square-like tensegrity model. Yeah, so if you created small triangles out of all the large ones, you'll get something that looks like this. Yeah. So, I hope you enjoy the model. Um, I hope you explore and experiment and learn lots and teach others lots about tensegrity and how it might relate to our bodies and our work. Enjoy!